that's right. Uh, you know, again, it, 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 as far as I'm concerned, it's, well, they believe it in their own heads. Uh, they're not only bloodline connection, they have the ideological henchmen who have sworn allegiance, you know, for one reason or another. The basic fact is that my researchers did discover this uh, connection to Egypt, not only there, but this uh, the, the basic uh, origin of the Knights Templar, the Order of Sion, you know, just the, the very Judaic phrases, uh, which actually are more correctly to say Egyptian atmist phrases. Well, that's, well let me on... stop you right there. I mean, that's an absolute fact, and, and that's not even hidden. That in you know nope. basic Masonic literature and basic magic literature, white and black, uh, it's all about the keys of Solomon, Solomon's ring, the seal of Solomon. Uh, it's all about controlling these jinn, these entities, these angels. And Solomon was open about it was the secret of Egypt and the secrets of Greece and the secrets of Babylon and the secrets of uh, uh, all of these countries. And people then say, well, the whole New World Order is Judaic. No, it was the Jews that codified it and who were big on writing things down. And so when Alexandria got destroyed in Egypt and when Rome got destroyed in its libraries, it was the Judaics who carried on the mystery schools. Right, within that, not ordinary Jews, but this elite group, uh, the, the Le Levites. Levitical level. The we're talking about the Kab yeah, we're talking about the Kabbalistic, Levitical, Mosaic, and also the, what's called the Gaonim. This is a word that people got to become familiar with because it explains the capital G that the Masons use. You know, um, people want to pick up my Irish origins of civilization double volume, they're going to find chapter after chapter there showing this connection between the Judaic elites and the ancient pharaonics, and then how that percolates down into modern times uh, through this occult, you know, bloodline dragon court thread that people really need to be understanding about so they can not only decode the symbolism, but they can find out the roots of this tyranny because we're here in the effects of the tyranny, but we need to know its origins as well. And the most amazing thing is that uh, these guys mean business. They lost an empire in the past. And, and, you know, they subsequently experienced a old world disorder. And so everything that's being built now, you know, students of the new world order need to realize it's because they're trying to build a new world order to replace an old and world disorder. And that's, that's why their symbol is the pyramid and the all-seeing eye, which is the black sunshine. Exactly. These people do worship the dark side of the sun. They can rightly be referred, uh, Christians refer to them as Luciferians, and it's perfectly adequate. As and that's exactly what the Nazis' what secret highest was the black sun. So it, it, yeah, and, and people say, how, oh, yeah, could, him, how could the Zionist and the Nazis worship the same thing? Because it doesn't matter. All these people at the top worship the same deal. How can it be that the same order of the Knights of Malta, the sovereign order of the Knights of Malta, can have members as extreme right? as von Papen and as Hermann Goring, and then five minutes later be initiating into their order people on the left as Nelson Mandela. i got a question for people as to why that would be. they got to realize that behind the large doors, we said earlier, none of these uh, distinctions on the street level mean a damn. This is an entire, you know, carnival, a dance macabre for people to get caught up in. You know, it's, it's just, it just has no reality, and this is what people need to understand. If they study the symbolism long enough, if they track it through, and I've done like 30 years of research on this, so, you know, the, this is the age in which this information is now finally finally coming to light. These guys, not only do they fully believe it in their own minds, some of these kings and queens, like Louis XVI of France and various other potentates, have designed entire cities based on Egyptian symbolism to prove that they believe themselves as the newborn yeah, sun the, kings and sun pharaohs. Yeah, that was the sun king and called himself the sun king. And then we had Francois Mitterrand admitting that he was channeling Lucifer and going on mountaintops to pray. Then they had the uh, Japanese architect build a pyramid uh, with 666 uh, pieces uh, of this uh, gold pink glass, and it has black pyramid inside. I mean, this is all right out in the open. That's right. I, I never stop stressing, you see, I mean, even though I've written a lot on Ireland, you know, uh, the second book in the volume is dedicated to Egypt to show exactly that it came from a specific time, from a, sp a specific individual, a sp specific cult, a specific v uh, warped version of solar occultism, you see, and how this continues alive. That is why there are so many obelisks in, in Rome and in Vatican City. That's why Rome has certain, you know, geomantic alignments that it does. Same thing applies to Washington, D.C. Same thing applies to Cologne, to Paris, They to believe London. that they it's call in spiritual forces from another dimension. Uh, now, again, whether you believe this or not, folks, the elite believe it. Explain the uh, the, the, the sacred architecture. 
Well, that's right. And within masonry, if you look at the highest degrees of masonry, they have that Judaic aspect that you were talking about, Knights of the Kadosh, Knights of the, you know, the, the uh, secret, uh, you know, all of these weird terminologies they've got right there. People can see this in the design of the cities. They can, you know, I have a huge collection of Masonic literature, so we're not making anything up. This is from the horse's mouth. You only need to go to the Albert Mackey's and to the actual Masonic encyclopedias. This is not hard to do, even though it takes a lot of time. But if people spend the time, you know, see the peruse our works, and we put this stuff on DVD, we put it in books, so it's there for people who don't have the time to do all this research to find out that America is not free. America has been colonized by the, you know, the royals and the pharaohs of old, and it, America was ostensibly meant to be the last bastion against these oligarchs, these imperialists. What the people need to understand in America context particularly is that the imperialism is not gone away. The stuff that you're seeing now with the, you know, the Amero coming in and the NAFTA and the CAFTA and the destruction of the American Constitution. This is a form of imperialism that has been insinuating. And take Ireland. In Ireland says no to the Lisbon Treaty, EU expansion, and then they say we don't care. We're going to bring it back up for another vote or implement it by fiat. It's exactly the same in the way that this, you know. This is a mafioso situation. They'll never this this uh, kind of uh, vampire never goes away until it's invited across. the And porch. going back and to Egypt, we, we you know we see it in the Old Testament uh, and in the New. Over and over again, the Pharaoh would send out to the different slave groups he had and would kill a large portion of their children to keep the slaves at a lower population. Uh, you see the CPS today uh, going out and kidnapping the children. It's all repeated, and they figured out thousands of years ago, thousands of years B.C., how to control societies. And I want, to, I want to highlight something you just said a few minutes ago about the kind of dark forces that they're in league with. Those dark, those, you know, again, if people don't understand it, that's, that's just too bad. But the fact is these people do not act in just a material sphere of, you know, uh, of influence. They are very much tied into something off-world. They're tied into other uh, dark angelic forces. And they have to offer up sacrifices on this planet to those beings that they're in league with. And that is what, my, in my view, is, you know, pretty much a lot of the child abduction the wars, the world wars that we've experienced, and just the general appetite, or not the appetite, but the general, dis uh, every day, the uh, toxic, you know, uh, influx of trauma across the TV, you see, and in our world in general. They need anxiety. They want to keep people, you know, crippled and mutilated. They are changing our neural pathways, showing us millions of simulated murders on TV, traumatizing yeah. us where they now have university studies with the brain waves, where the area of the brain associated with pleasure, even in, quote, quote, mainstream people, is lighting up when they see simulated murders, torture, death. They are turning us psychically into them. I couldn't agree more, Alex, and, you know, it's a situation of, of the normal, lower-level sadomasochism that people have multiplied infinitely, this constant appeal to the limbic and mammalian centers of the brain, you know, and it's a diet, and a diet until you get so used to it that you don't even know what reason is anymore. You can't critically look at anything. You have an immediate defense mechanism as soon as the, you know, it's like most of these people that today you have the Internet riddled with Internet assassins and, and debunkers, so-called, quote-unquote. And these are people that I describe like the deer in the headlights of the oncoming truth movement who can't not stand that oncoming, you know, juggernaut of truth. And that's and so the next you know, issue they, they, is, is the enemy knows throughout history the human spirit rebels uh, goodness uh, you know the light uh, you know literally blots out their their black sunshine as they call it and so they're doing everything they can with chemicals and microwaves and frequency pollution and radiation openly and they write all this in their own documents that we've covered and we cover in endgame blueprint for global enslavement to pollute our minds uh, with the images the toxins all of it overlaid you know the brainwashing through the television uh, both semantically and with the frequency of it, to to to, to try to blind us, uh, and I've seen them go from arrogant to now being fearful. What are they so afraid of, Michael? Well, they're always afraid of the human race because this is the surf, you know, that they they've been able to enslave, and of course the the big fear is that that you know that particular indentured servant slave might in fact wake up and throw away you know the, all of the junk that you know basically an age of awakening is what they're fearful of anyone who has control that's surreptitious anyone who has a catalog of, of criminality like they have these are super criminals mega criminals the genocides the colonializations the war on consciousness you know all the devastation that they've wreaked of course these are criminals who don't want 
you know, uh, to be discovered or the light to be shone on them. I've often said in my work that, hey, these guys say that they're worshipers of the sun. They claim to worship light. What would happen to them? Let's see the effects on them when we turn the light of truth and knowledge on to them. See how they like it. You know, and this is well, the age that we're in with kind of exposure. They traffic in the souls of men. That's really what's valuable to them is blinders, shutting people down, darkness, destruction. Look at the artwork the elite buys, buckets of maggots, images of dead babies. I mean, I mean, this is the most popular art across the board worldwide with the elites. You know, a hundred million pounds sometimes, uh, two hundred million dollars, you know, for one piece of blasphemous art. And they say we're buying this art to worship it, to to adulate it, uh, to you know, to give it the support it deserves. So, what is their master plan? If they were to win. What is the world they're trying to set up? Let's get into the technological. Well, it's not, uh, it's not, they're not trying. They're, they're not trying to set it up. They've already been doing it. As I said before, this imperialist movement of this juggernaut. We're only seeing the latter days of something that has been a continuous, ongoing, incremental uh, movement. You know. Gone through history. Americans tend to, you know, not see that. They don't see, uh, you know, the whole movement of well, stuff. Well, Michael, I see it. I'm go- talking about their end game. They're gearing up for something big. 